Interstellar, the story of the secret star system, or simply Interstellar 5555, is a spacefaring one quite unlike any other. Pitched by electronic music duo Daft Punk to legendary anime creator Leiji Matsumoto, Interstellar's hour-long runtime acts as a music video for an entire album, 2001's seminal Discovery. A marriage of French music and Japanese animation, a wordless tale of love, corruption and killer beats, it's safe to say there simply isn't anything in the galaxy, quite like Interstellar. Telling, in 14 parts, the story of a smoking hot intergalactic pop group, the Crescent Dolls, being abducted by a nefarious record producer to win him awards and adulation, the movie is, at its heart, a not-so-subtle attack on overly produced music and the industry at large. Known for their incredible, futuristic and identity-concealing helmets, Daft Punk have long rejected the invasive fame that comes with stardom. That distaste is compounded by Interstellar's story of a unique talent being absorbed and regurgitated as something that will appeal to the largest demographic, and how this careful, calculated approach to music is sapping artists of their originality and beauty. But whilst this tale could have easily been a heavy-handed offensive that robbed the title of any narrative charm, it's a wonderfully balanced piece, largely due to tethering itself to Daft Punk's tunes. The story trades in melancholic beats such as the loss of self and one another, as the film spirals towards an ending tinged with bitter sadness. But the music of Daft Punk works wonders to invigorate the movie with a pulse and a forward momentum it may have otherwise lacked. The romantic subplot that rears its head halfway into the film is wonderfully serviced by Something About Us, for instance, whilst songs that have gone on to become era-defining hits, such as One More Time, ensure that no matter the existential drama unfolding on screen, we're tapping our feet, singing along and investing wholeheartedly in this intergalactic tale. Interstellar's greatest success, however, is in how much the film speaks whilst never uttering a word. It tells a multi-layered story, one that works as both an engaging sci-fi flick and a metaphor for losing one's identity in the pursuit of mass appeal, with nothing but a traditionally errant electronic vocal from Daft Punk themselves. Even more impressive is that, thanks to these fragments serving as each track's official music video, they are often presented piecemeal and lose little in the process. When I was a lot younger, I often caught them out of order whilst flicking through music channels and was always thrilled when I spotted a new one. Even as individual clips, they work surprisingly well, both as standalone music videos and as a puzzle piece to an enchanting whole, waiting for you to fit it together in your mind and witness the rise, the fall, and the rebirth of the Crescent Dolls. Much like Daft Punk's music, I'm always stunned by how well Interstellar has aged and how progressive it still feels, nearly two decades after its debut. Its themes are remarkably fresh for anime of the time, and its questions strangely prophetic, whilst its willingness to truly probe new ground made it far more alien than its more intergalactic contemporaries. Ultimately, Interstellar transcends the cynical questions on its surface and, much like in the movie, overcomes its existential threat. With its marriage of rich, vibrant visuals and its electronic house soundscape, it finds its heart, one that easily delights, and finds fun in a much simpler message. Music brings us all together. No matter where you're from, no matter what planet you call home, sometimes you've just got to come together and celebrate things that are worth jamming to. One more time. <laughs>